So a viewer has asked about Joe Biden's political future. He's in his 80s. But I was asked, so that's what we'll do. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, um, you know, I just always considered that this would be the end of the road for Joe Biden. It's all gravy for whatever's left for, of of him from here on out. But we'll ask the question and see what the cards uh, shed light on. So he was born November 20th, 1942, and he's a Scorpio, and he was born at Scranton, Pennsylvania, and the eldest uh, child in a Catholic family. He has a sister and two brothers, and um, Biden has a stutter, which has improved uh, since his early 20s. He reduced it by reciting poetry in a mirror. Uh, Biden's father had been wealthy, but suffered uh, financial setbacks, and for several years the family lived with Biden's mother's parents. Now, uh, by 1953, his dad became a successful uh, used car salesman, maintaining a middle-class lifestyle. And in 1961, Joey Jr. Uh, played baseball and was a standout halfback and wide receiver on the high school uh, football team, although he was a poor student. And his class, uh, he was class president in his junior and senior years, and he graduated. In 1965, Joe briefly played freshman football at the University of Delaware in Newark and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree and a double major in history and political science and a minor in uh, English. 1966, he married his first wife, uh, Nelia Hunter, and they had three children, uh, Joseph R. Bo Biden III, the oldest, then Robert Hunter Biden, and Naomi uh, Christina Amy uh, Biden. Now, in 1968, Joe earned a Juris Doctor from Syracuse University College of Law, and in 1969 he was admitted to the Delaware Bar. In 1968 he was given a conditional medical deference from the military due to asthma. And then in 1968 also he earned a law degree from Syracuse University, as I said, and clerked at Wilmington Law Firm and thought of himself as a Republican, but registered as an independent because of his distaste for the Republican presidential candidate, which was Richard Nixon. Then 1969, he practiced law as a public defender and then privately at a firm headed uh, by a locally active uh, Democrat. In 1969, uh, Joe Biden subsequently registered as a Democrat. And then in 1970, he was elected to the Newcastle uh, County, uh, County Council. 1973 through 2009, for 49 years, Joe represented Delaware in the United States Senate. Some might say that was too long, some might say that was amazing. 1972, Joe was uh, first uh, elected to the uh, Delaware Senate. And then in 1972, a few weeks after his first election, Biden's wife, Nelia, and one-year-old daughter, Naomi, were killed in an automobile accident while Christmas shopping. Uh, her station wagon was hit by a semi-trailer uh, truck as she pulled out from the intersection. And uh, their sons, uh, Bo, age three, and Hunter, age two, survived. Uh, Biden considered uh, resigning um, to care for his kids, but the Senate Majority Leader persuaded him not to do that. Uh, years later, Biden said that he had heard that the truck driver allegedly drank alcohol before the collision, and the driver's family denied that claim. And uh, the police never substantiated it, and Joe later apologized to the family. Imagine that. Now, the accident had filled him with anger and religious doubt, and Joe wrote that he felt God had played a horrible trick on him and he had a, tr a lot of trouble focusing at work imagine uh, 1975 he met uh, a teacher Jill Tracy Jacobs and on a blind date and Biden credits her with the renewal of his interest in politics and life and in 1977 they were married 1981 their daughter Ashley Biden was born in 1991 to 2008, Biden co-taught a seminar on constitutional law at Widener uh, University School of Law. Now, 1987 to 95, he chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee, and Biden was re-elected to the Senate six times. 2008, he unsuccessfully uh, ran for the Democratic presidential candidate, but became Obama's uh, vice presidential candidate. And then 2009 to 2017, he served as the 47th vice president under Barack Obama. He's the oldest elected president and the first to have a female 
vice president. So let's see what the political future holds, if there is a political future for Joe. Okay, we have another viewer question from Booper Pot Pie. Love that uh, name. And uh, Booper Pot wants to know uh, about Joe Biden. Uh, what's in his political future, his uh, political career future? I mean, is there? I mean, I guess you could say um, he says he's going to run for another term as president. So maybe there's that that it'll reveal. But let's just leave the question very open and ask uh, Booper Pot's question. What is in Joe Biden's career uh, political career future. Is that what you said? Yep. Okay, what is in the future uh, career-wise for Joe Biden? Let's see what this comes to. Joe Biden, what's in your political future? Before we do anything, let's get a little reinforcement here. Meditation. Okay, Joe Biden's political future. What's going on? Joe Biden's political future. Who the guy wants to know? Six of Swords moving out of trouble war. What is in the future politically for Joe Biden? And moving out of trouble water kind of makes itself uh, come out of the deck. Joe Biden's political future. Thank you, Mookabot, for the question. Six cards. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Here we go. Very interesting question. What is in the future politically for Joe Biden? Signifier card. Page of Swords. This is interesting. So Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. Page is the very weakest of the court cards. Joe Biden's political future. So this is bringing a message. And this page is, is swallowing truth, justice, rules, and law. What does that mean? That's the message this page is bringing to court. The challenge, then, uh, is this Page of Cups. So another week card, although uh, uh, above the uh, citizenry, okay, so this page of cups is bringing a compa cups of compassion emotion, and this cup has a surprise in it, this little fish getting ready to jump out. So, is this Kamala? Is this Joe Biden trying to swallow the truth? And is this Kamala with a surprise? Uh, the base of this reading is this Two of Pentacles. Okay, finding Pentacles are, are value, sometimes money, but I think we're talking value here. And the, the base of this whole thing is finding that balance. Joe Biden is who we're talking about. Finding that balance. The um, This is very interesting. Even this, uh, the look on this page's face reminds me of Kamala. The past to this reading, uh, with this Three of Swords, broken heart. Truth, justice, rules, law, broken heart. Yeah, that was the past. This is why Joe became president, ran for president. He never wanted to. And... Um, at this time in his life anyway. And so that's uh, a broken heart for truth, justice, rules, and law. That was the past. That's why he's there. And in the sky of this reading is the sun. Of course, the sun is in the sky. He has shown a light on how things were and how they can be and how they should be. Okay. And then the likely outcome, Joe's political future, Seven of Swords is kind of um, betrayal, theft and betrayal, and Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. So the likely outcome of this first part of this thing for Joe Biden's political future uh, hinges on somehow theft and betrayal. So is this harking back to the past of why he's there to begin with? Um, the last four cards for this reading, then, signifier card of the self of that very question is the star. Yeah, Joe uh, had to become the star in order to, um, to move... Um, uh, his agenda forward, which I think was noble, a noble agenda. Uh, the environment that that's in is temperance, finding that balance, of course. Political future for Joe Biden. Hopes and the fears. Ah, tower card. Yeah, the tower card is, uh, you know, a destruction that has to be rebuilt. Hmm. And uh, it has to be paid attention to. That's interesting. I think this is um, the hopes and the fears would be that he has uh, created uh, repair for that uh, broken tower. The likely outcome of this whole thing, Joe Biden's political future, is coming fast. The chariot 
it's coming fast. So you know what this says to me, um, it just makes me feel instantly he's going to be reelected. Um, what about Joe Biden's political uh, future? Well, we've got the page of swords here. This is Joe. He's a very weak uh, messenger of truth, justice, rules, and law. He's letting the Department of Justice be the messenger. Okay, the um, challenge of that to that though is this uh, page of cups. Uh, and for me, this is Camelo. Is she does she have uh, compassion and emotional surprise? This makes me think that uh, he'll win a second time. He's going to die in office. She's going to take over and do a good job. That just just like that. Um, the base of this reading is this Two of Pentacles, and that's finding the perfect balance uh, to get everything done, which is what he's had to try to do. And then the past of this reading is a broken heart, which is why he became president to begin with. And the sky of the reading is the sun shining a light on everything. And the likely outcome of the first part of this is that there's still some betrayal and theft to be dealt with. The self of that very question is the star. Uh, okay, and he was the star power that could start to make this happen, thank God. And then the... Um, uh, environment that that's in is temperance. Again, finding that balance just like this Two of Pentacles, but this is major arcana. So this is important, really major, important temperance. Yeah, like that. And then the hopes and fears uh, for this is uh, this tower card. The tower that uh, he uh, came into and it started to repair. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is uh, coming forward fast. Things moving at a clip pace. So I think he's going to get reelected, and I think at some point, and it seems like sooner, sooner rather than later, um, it's going to be Camelot's turn. That's what I felt. I think that was pretty predictive. Uh, let me know what your interpretations were. I'm always interested to know how you guys look at the cards. I mean, they have a specific meaning to me, but I, that doesn't mean they have a specific meaning to you. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box. Nice magnetic clasp. Good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card, an annual card, shadow cards, and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78. And I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them. I'll explain why, why that is even. So we're going to start with the booklet. And um, it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all the pictures of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so, a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook. Uh, the, her, her she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer. Um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the, the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out. But it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon. And I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a thinnish weight of card, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges, and uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color, and it tells you under each of the cards how to use them, and then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here, and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting, but I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I picked here, and it's in this deck somewhere. <laughs> but uh, so this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then 
for justice and strength. They've been numbered hyster- historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards period for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as justice is number eight and strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as strength number eight and justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and then if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think it's a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So, ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.